Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're gonna be talking about malware classification and identification, and then we'll move on to Yara, sort of like an introduction into it, and then in the next couple of videos, we'll be taking a look at malware identification and classification with Yara. All right, so let's start off with uh, what exactly malware classification and or identification is. So malware classification is the process of classifying malware samples based on shared characteristics with previously analyzed samples, right? So an example of these characteristics are, for example, strings and binary code, right? So those are the characteristics that you'll be using or the various uh, pieces of data that you'll be looking at when trying to classify or identify a piece of a malware or a malware sample. Right, so uh, we have already talked about, about classification and uh, identification to some extent. And of course, that was with a hash based identification where we talked about the MD5 hashes, uh, SHA1, SHA256, etc. And the, the fact that you can use uh, ha hashes like this to identify pieces of malware, uh, you know, that could be in a particular state. However, there, there are a couple of issues with hash based identification or classification. Right, one of the first issues is the content of the samples are changed by attackers to evade hash based identification, right? So uh, that is essentially being the point of. Uh, or uh, simply put uh, the fact that attackers can change the content of the malware and that uh, consequently changes the uh, the hash the cryptographic hash uh, it could be md5 sha256 etc uh, secondly crypto uh, cryptographic hashing is only accurate if the data or content of the samples remains the same you know coming back to the first point so if just one line of code is changed the hash changes completely so if i change for example the first two uh, bytes of the hexadecimal data uh, then the entire hash changes and we, we saw this when taking a look at uh, packed and unpacked samples right so that was pretty much a, a good uh, example of this um, now, one thing to note is the attacker may only change a small portion of, they, they may change one bit of the sample, right? So you could be working on one piece of malware and then there could be another variant where the, the hash is completely different, but the functionality remains the same, right? So uh, the, the, in most cases, what is happening here is that attackers will usually plant random strings or data to change the hash uh, and of course, consequently, uh, to avoid hash-based identification. So we, we already explained this, uh, or we already took a look at this when talking about garbage strings, right? So what attackers will do is it could be the same sample, but the hash is different. And the reason it's different is because they have changed uh, the content and this can be done by removing or adding pieces of data or strings. Uh, and uh, one example of this is the garbage strings that we have seen with many samples where you have just a ton of random strings that have nothing to do with the functionality of the of the malware. They're just there to sort of change the hash. And this in turn uh, then uh, is essentially is set up for them so that they can evade hash uh, avoid hash-based identification. So what is my main point here? Well, my main point is that hash-based signature identification or detection is completely inaccurate and should not be relied upon for accurate classification or identification of samples. Now, I mentioned that it is quite accurate in the previous videos and I was referring to the actual identification when actually looking for particular samples to uh, analyze, right? So these are samples that are already out there. However, when dealing with samples from the wild, you shouldn't ju you shouldn't go uh, upon or uh, so sort of rely upon a hash-based identification for your uh, for for your analysis, right? So this is where Yara comes into play. All right. So you might be asking, well, what exactly is Yara? Well, Yara is a fantastic malware identification and classification tool that works by matching patterns across various malware samples. Now, the patterns, of course, can vary depending on what you decide. Uh, they are, and they usually uh, go. They usually are uh, either in, in in the terms of hexadecimal or strings, whatever you feel is uh, is necessary. And you might be a little bit confused, and I'll explain this when we start talking about Yara rules and how to structure various rules. Um, so, what can you do with Yara that makes it so special? Well, first of all, is specific signature identification based on particular. Uh, signatures that you have decided upon. So, for example, if I had a particular sample that uh, was connecting to a command and control center uh, 
uh, in Russia uh, or, or you know connecting to a particular IP I could use that IP for future detection so I could uh, generate rules that identify particular signatures that can then be used to detect future similar infections so I can say I can create a rule that uh, looks for those particular IPs in any uh, future sample so that we can also protect uh, a, a network or a business or a company from future uh, for, from these future attacks right and we can also use it for detection and, and get an idea of where uh, most of the attackers are coming from right so th these are pretty much the basic advantages of using yara and of course we'll be taking a lot a uh, look at all of them as we move along through this series so in the next video we'll get started by taking a look at yara rules how to create your very own rule and how we'll be using it for our particular case before we get started with dynamic analysis so i'll be seeing you in the next video